Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining Up North Prevention Podcast on our YouTube channel. My name is Mike Maturin. I'm a prevention specialist with Up North Prevention, which is an initiative of Catholic Human Services. My guest today is the Honorable Judge George Mertz of the 46th Circuit Court in uh, Otsego County. Uh, welcome, Judge. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Oh, it's my pleasure. Uh, just to get started, why don't we? Um, why don't you give us just a little bit of background on yourself and uh, what it is you do and why you do it? Sure. Well, uh, I graduated from law school from Michigan State in 2001. I served as a law clerk here in the 46th Circuit for a couple of years, and then went into private practice and worked in private practice until 2013. Um, I was appointed to this position as 46th Circuit Court Judge in 2013. Excellent. Congratulations on that. Thank you. And uh, the, now, so you, you've you gotten involved with a group called FAN, uh, Families Against Narcotics, and you are serving as its president, correct? Correct. Good. Why don't you, uh, give us a, just a little bit of information about FAN and what they do. Sure. FAN's an organization that started in uh, Macomb County in the town of Frazier a number of years ago. And unfortunately, what happened in that community, there was a number of overdose deaths of, of young teenagers um, in a short period of time. And it caused an alarm within the community and caused a group of community leaders, uh, local uh, city council members, local clergy, law enforcement, uh, substance abuse uh, counselors to get together to try and come up with some strategies of how to combat that problem. And it grew from there into a statewide organization, which is now uh, 23 different local chapters around the state. And the Otsego County chapter began um, this summer. Mm -hmm. And I think the newest one is just south of us in Crawford County. Yes, um, and they're growing as well. So that's a good that's a good thing. I think we need more of this type of thing uh, out there. Um, why why did you choose to get involved with Fan? Well, the, the the main goal of Fan is to provide education, information, and resources both to individuals who are suffering from a substance abuse disorder and their family members, and so. It, that one of their goals along with providing that information is to reduce the stigma and help people understand that number one, this is a disease. Yep. And number two, it's not something that, that needs to be hidden or kept secret uh, within families. It's something that, that happens to people of all different right. uh, demographic backgrounds, socioeconomic backgrounds. Um, and so it, it, it's trying to reduce that stigma. The reason why I got involved in it is, is a couple reasons. Number one, through my work as a circuit court judge, a great deal of my docket deals with people who have substance abuse disorders. Either they've committed a crime that's directly related to a controlled substance like use or possession or, uh, or delivery or manufacture, or they've committed another different type of crime, a theft crime, for example, in order to support uh, their substance abuse habit. Right. And so it's, it's something that I see that crosses a lot of boundaries in my work. And so I had an interest in trying to figure out ways to deal with that outside of the criminal justice system, which really isn't meant to deal with addiction. You know, the criminal justice system is meant to um, punish and deter uh, mm -hmm. criminal conduct. And one thing that I think has been learned about substance abuse disorders is you can't just tell somebody to stop doing it. You can't put them in jail for a year and expect that they're going to come out and, and not have the problem anymore because it, it's too complex and it, it's not that easy. And so it, to me, it's important to find ways to combat this within our community outside of the criminal justice system. Right. So there's that. And then I also have some personal experience. Um, unfortunately, I had a younger brother who was 14 months younger than me mm. who died in 2019 uh, from a combination of heroin and fentanyl uh, of an accidental overdose. And he battled his disorder for a long time. And, and I know just personal experience as a family member of someone with a substance abuse disorder that you, you don't know what to do. Families don't know what to do. You know, my mom, my sisters, myself, we all struggled with 
how do we deal with this? Do, do we try to help them? Do we give them money? You know, do we just completely cut off contact? Right. What can we do? And, and so one of the things I think is great about FAN is there is that family component to provide support and information education to the family members too, so that they don't do the wrong things and they, they can try to do the right things to help uh, their friend or loved one. So my involvement is based on those two different kind of um, aspects. Yeah. Well, thank you for sharing that. That's, um, and sorry to hear about the loss of your brother. It's, uh, there's way too much of that going on. Um, which kind of brings me to my next point with this pandemic, um, you know, and everyone being so isolated and uh, frustrated and getting depressed and all of that, we're seeing, at least in, in my work, we're seeing a, a big spike in uh, substance use, um, in overdose, in depression, and suicide. Are you seeing that in on your end of things, on the law enforcement end of things? I am, and it's unfortunate because I... I have cases scheduled and I'll have a hearing that's canceled. And the reason is because the person's deceased and it's from an accidental overdose. So I am, I am seeing that. I don't know that it's any more uh, than it, than it has been in the past due to COVID. Um, but I know that it's not stopping COVID. Right. The focus on COVID hasn't helped um, the problem with substance abuse disorder. Right. So uh, it, it's still there. And, and I think, People have a tendency, and you know, understandably so, to kind of focus on the immediacy of the COVID problem. Right. But this this issue hasn't gone away, and people are still dying from overdoses. Right. Now, I know that um, the fan uh, group has all kinds of different programs available, uh, support type groups, uh, uh, public speaking type opportunities for for folks to come into organizations. Um, tell me a little bit about some of those. Right. Well, we try to provide a, a wide array of different types of programming to address different aspects of substance abuse disorder and um, what families deal with regarding that. So, for example, um, we had a panel at our uh, the forum before last that involved family members mm -hmm. talking about how substance abuse disorder of, of their loved one or friend affected them and, and things that they tried to do to deal with it. Um, the last forum we had dealt with expungement of mm -hmm. uh, criminal records. Most people who have a substance abuse disorder have, have some type of criminal record, whether it's a misdemeanor or felony. And the legislature in Michigan has really made great strides in the last couple of years and is continuing to make strides in making expungement of prior offenses easier and you know, more widely available. And so for people who are in recovery, mm -hmm. um, those convictions can be a bar to employment. They can be a bar to housing. They can be a bar to, to student loans. Right. Um, they can really affect that person's recovery and their ability to move on. And so being able to expunge some of those and have that not be a problem can really help with the recovery process. Mm -hmm. Um, we have another uh, organization called Stronger Together, and that is really just geared towards families um, and friends of people with substance abuse disorders. I was going to ask you about that because that, uh, in my research, really piqued my interest as a group that really could um, make a huge difference in the, in, uh, the community out there. Right. And, and, and again, the, the family and friends component to that is mm -hmm. it, it, to somebody's recovery is huge because, um, again, it, it's hard for people to know how to handle their friend or loved one. And the more information they have about that, um, the more they can help that person. And, and like I said, do the right things instead of the wrong things. Right. Um, so that is that's an important component. Uh, we also are working on piloting. Mm -hmm. Um, a program here in Otsego County, and there's a few others around the state involved with FAN that are doing this, but it's called Hope Not Handcuffs. Yes. And it's a program where if someone who has a substance abuse disorder um, needs to, they can come to a law enforcement agency and we can get that person into treatment within 24 hours of when they walk through the door of that law enforcement agency. And um, number one, that, that 
I think it gives people another place to turn. Sometimes they don't know where to go. They, the, right. they go to a hospital, they don't know what to do. Um, and it, it gets them into treatment right away. I mean, mm-hmm. that, that quick 24 hour period is crucial because when they, when they come in asking for that help, they're ready for it at that time. Yeah. And you want to get them into treatment as soon as you can. Absolutely. So that's, that's kind of some examples of the range of programs that, that fan, uh, tries to support programs do you think would be helpful what kinds of things can the average joe you know joe joe coffee uh go out and um and do take part in in order to help with this um, substance use problem that we're seeing this epidemic really that's um, going across our country yeah you know i don't know that there's anything that that anyone can actively do outside of getting involved with groups like fan and volunteering Mm -hmm. their time um, other than just uh, getting educated about it, getting information about it, uh, the more people understand that this is something that can happen in any family of, of any socioeconomic background, uh, wealthy people, um, you know, it, people who are educated, people who are not educated, you know, I mean, it, it just, it crosses so many different boundaries yeah. that the more people know and understand that, that this is a disorder, um, that it's not something, it's something maybe somebody chose to do to start, maybe not. Sometimes it's a result of, of uh, prescription medications that are taken legally and according to directions and, and folks have a hard time stopping. Right. Um, but it's it, it becomes something that that person no longer has a choice in. They can't mm-hmm. just decide to stop it. Just like if you had cancer, you couldn't decide to not have cancer anymore. Right. Um, it's, it's a disorder, it's a disease, and it needs to be treated like that. And I think the more people understand that, um, the more it's going to open up options within communities to allow for that as opposed to you know, just ignoring it. The name of the organization is Families Against Narcotics, but it's much more than just what we would typically consider narcotics, right? Sure. I mean, this can... The main focus in, in what got fans started was the opioid epidemic mm-hmm. and the problems with heroin and fentanyl and the fact that the use of legal prescriptions can lead to abuse of street drugs. And, and it was designed to combat that because that was the particular problem. But as it's grown, mm-hmm. um, it encompasses all types of substance abuse, whether it's alcohol, uh, opiates, um, you know, the, the, the programming that we try to provide could address any number of different types of issues. Right. How, if someone wants to get involved, uh, either as a volunteer or uh, as a family member of somebody who is struggling with addiction, um, how do they get involved in your chapter or not Sego? Or if somebody's listening to this podcast from another part uh, of the world, um, how do they get involved? How do they seek out information? Well, if you were interested in the fan organization, uh, our website is familiesagainstnarcotics.org, and we have a separate uh, page within their website for our Otsego County chapter. And you can search, you know, if you're not from the Gaylord area, you know, if you're from Traverse City or, um, you know, Harrisville or wherever you might be from, you can search right. the website and, and it'll it'll provide you with the, the chapter that's closest to you. Um, each Chapter also has its own Facebook page with upcoming events. It's mm-hmm. updated regularly. So there's a lot of information out there about fans' activities and about the organization itself uh, if you wanted to get involved with that. Excellent. You know, I've said in uh, as a as a preventionist, I've said, you know, that that tackling this problem is is a multi-pronged solution. We can't you know, just arrest our way out of it. Um, we can't, you know, we, we have to have education. We have to have law enforcement and, and we also have to have treatment. And so I think this, the fan organization is providing a, a big part of that support 
that uh, educational component as we do as prevention specialists. Um, you, of course, are a part of the law enforcement, but now you're also part of, because you've seen it personally with your brother and, and through your work, you've seen uh, that it, like you have said several times now, that it, it's a disease. Uh, it's a disorder. It's not a, uh, it's not a character flaw. It's, uh, and it can happen to anybody. I mean, it can happen to grandma, um, you know, has surgery, gets some narco pretty soon, um, can't get off of them. So it, it, it knows no boundaries, rich, poor, black, white, male, female, young, old, um, you know, lawyers, doctors, mechanics, and garbage men. It, it just, um, it, it's not a uh, respecter of persons, if you will. Um, so I think uh, I, I owe you a debt of gratitude for doing what you do. And um, I think it's so important um, to have these kinds of opportunities. So I would encourage our viewers and our listeners, um, if you don't have a fan chapter in your area, go to the familiesagainstnarcotics.org website, get some information. If it's something that you would like to get started, um, certainly uh, pursue that. If you're in our area um, of Northern Michigan, the, the Fort, 14 of the 21 counties of Northern Michigan, north of M55. Um, you can contact myself or go to our upnorthprevention.org website and um, ask for information and we can help you kind of get things going that way. I appreciate you spending uh, some time with us today out of your busy schedule. I know with just two judges in your circuit, your dockets are probably overflowing, although without face to face how are you working that are you doing um mostly zoom type hearings and arraignments or we are doing mostly zoom we're, we're trying to transition a little bit back into some of the in-person hearings but i there's going to be i think parts of the docket that will never fully go back to in person and i think that's a good thing you know yeah. I, I think um there, there are certainly advantages to using this format but yeah that it's has not Oh, down at all. <laughs> <laughs> well, we appreciate you being with us, and I will forgive you for, for being a, a Michigan State graduate. Um, <laughs> we, <laughs> my dad was a, a graduate of University of Michigan, and I spent all of my growing up years every Saturday at the big house. So, but I'm, I have to be careful because I'm also on the advisory council for Michigan State University Extension. So <laughs> I, I'm a big tent uh, university man go. here in Michigan. So I, I do appreciate your taking the time to be with us, to share this information and to, uh, to do what you do to make a difference in uh, those folks that are struggling with, with addiction. So thank you very much, Judge Mertz for being with us. And uh, folks, if you have any questions, please feel free to go to upnorthprevention.org. You can email us from there and uh, we will reach out back to you to, um, to answer any questions that you might have. Again, thank you for joining Up North Prevention Podcast. You can go to our YouTube channel at Up North Prevention and you can find uh, several videos on there. We'll be releasing new videos and podcasts every month. So look for that. And while you're there, be sure to hit the subscribe button and the bell icon so you can get notifications of any new videos that are released. Thanks again, Judge Mertz, and folks, we'll talk to you next time. Thank you. Take care. The Up North Prevention Podcast is advancing substance use prevention efforts in northern lower Michigan and beyond. Learn more at upnorthprevention.org. Subscribe to Up North Prevention on YouTube or wherever you listen to podcasts, and we'll see you in the next episode. Funding provided by Northern Michigan Regional Entity.